Hey everyone, this is Grant from Spectra Racing. So this is gonna be a quick video on how to prep your Tesla for autocross. Okay, so a couple quick things. If you've never done autocross before, be sure to check out our beginner's guide on our website that goes through every little thing you could ever possibly want to know. This video will be a little bit more focused on electric cars. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing is, uh, obviously you're gonna probably want a set of racing wheels. So the racing wheel specs I have here, these are Forged Star F14s. Uh, the specs are gonna be down below in the video. So with the Tesla, you can actually fit uh, three of them in the back seat. These are uh, 265 wide tires, 19s. These are for Super Street. So I put them in the back of the car. This looks a little ridiculous, uh, but this is actually my wife's daily driver. I do not uh, really, you can get them in here without scratching anything. I put a little mat down, good to go. So with the tires, uh, before the event, I make sure to remove uh, the stupid covers here. Uh, so when you're on your way to the event, this is one less thing you have to do when you get there. So one of the most common things you're gonna hear is, uh, you know, what about scratching a car, hitting cones with the Tesla? Uh, I put on my own PPE, it was too much, too way too expensive uh, to have someone else do it. The most common uh, spot you're gonna hit stuff is obviously the front of the car uh, and right here. This is actually probably more common than the front of the car. You can already see some of the uh, PBE, PBF, sorry, uh, that I've used here. So some of the things and tools you're gonna need, uh, just basic things to, uh, you know, change the tires and stuff. You're gonna need the jack pads with the Tesla you can fit most of the good tools in the front. You're gonna need a jack. Uh, so the three tires fit in the back like you saw. They are strapped in, um, just so <laughs> in case of an accident, uh, they don't kill me in the car. You can fit a jack in the back and you fit the fourth tire in the back. I do recommend bringing a uh, little pad to sit on. Most of the autocross locations is either gonna be on really hot asphalt or grass or something uh, that can definitely help so i do have a video on setting tire pressure and like i said it is on our website uh how to set initial tire pressure of the racing tires or if you're just using your daily driver tires uh, but essentially all you do is you kind of set it to whatever the factory recommendation is and you start letting air out until you start to see this line roll over here now some tires nowadays won't do that so you want to be careful and not go too low uh, generally, it depends, you know, on uh, the specific car, some lighter cars like Miatas and stuff, you can go in the low 20s even. Uh, these cars are very heavy. Uh, there's a lot of debate. I like to run the Falcons fairly low. Some people run it fairly high. Um, I found it's a bit more slidey, fairly high, so I usually run these in the lower 30s, 32, 33. Uh, I found that pretty effective. So one of the other obvious questions uh, people are gonna ask you is uh, how much juice do you need uh, to go autocrossing? Well, the peak power I've seen on some of the forums and on the internet is at 90% state of charge and at a certain temperature. Uh, so I usually try and arrive at, you know, at or uh, above 90%. Now keep in mind above 90% of regenerative braking may or may not work. If there's, I think the cutoff point is around 90%. So uh, with track usage, as you saw in the previous video uh, that I when I tracked this thing uh, on a 1.14 mile track, 20 minute session, it was using uh, about 25%. So figure you're not really gonna use that much in an autocross, at most you might use about 25%. So one of the other uh, hilarious things I noticed is uh, you can actually fit a t-shirt over the driver's seat here. And this is mostly just to help protect the, uh, the white rich Corinthian fake leather uh, that's in the Tesla. Uh, you still probably need some kind of protection for the, the bottom here. If you don't care about your seats, you don't have to do this. Like I said, this is a daily driver. So one thing that may not be commonly known with this car is there's only one real place you can put uh, magnetic autocross letters on. is right here. This is the only quarter panel. Uh, this kind of area on the car here is the only part of the car that's metal. Everything else is aluminum. Well, you can put it on the trunk here, but it's kind of useless. So these are the size letters I have. These are the eight inch letters. Uh, so you kind of have to kind of 
But here, you don't really have a lot of space on this car. Just kind of FYI. Okay, so another important question is what settings do you use? I do use track mode if you have a uh, performance edition Tesla. So here are my settings that I use. Uh, this is might be a bit more of a preferential, um, you know, uh, taste or whatever, but um, I put stability assist at negative 10. Every time I've tried to use a little bit more, uh, the stability assist is geared towards safety and not performance. So, uh, in a few of my videos, I think I went over this, but essentially when you start to lose it, the Tesla will try and get you back going straight. And that's not necessarily what you want to do in a performance situation. So I just like leaving it off completely. It does involve a little bit more skill in the driver in getting the car to go where you want. This car is incredibly well balanced, so I have not found that an issue whatsoever. In the six events I've done and a couple track sessions, I've only spun it once. Uh, and that was the first time I ever took it out, and that was before I put the uh, the unplugged performance dampers on the car. So as you can see here, the handling balance is 50-50, regenerative braking 100% post-drive cooling. Uh, I've only gotten it uh, heated, overheated uh, once, and that was on track. Autocross is not hard enough on the car. So as far as some driving tips when you get out into the course, uh, if you're new to autocross, just take your time and uh, get started to get a rhythm going. Start slow and build up your confidence. The handling quirks with this car, uh, if you don't have upgraded dampers, uh, the weight management is very difficult. The stock dampers do not translate uh, movement uh, that great, uh, especially if you run in stickier tires. So I would actually not recommend uh, autocrossing this car with stickier tires until you get those upgraded dampers. Then again, it is still fun. So just know that with stickier tires, uh, it will lurch and brake very extreme. I have actually scraped the front of the car on heavy braking. I have uh, the upgraded pads on this. But with the upgraded dampers, this car is the best balanced car I think I've ever driven. It translates and rotates absolutely perfectly. Uh, just know that it is still very heavy, and even with the upgraded dampers, it still can scrape on heavy braking. Uh, so you just gotta be careful there. You really, uh, the other kind of downside of this car is uh, the extreme acceleration. It is very hard to hold yourself in place with the stock seats. Uh, so you kind of end up with kind of a subpar uh, steering wheel grip and um, <laughs> and you get very sore afterwards. So just know uh, that you kind of have to very much so think ahead even more so than normal cars with uh, this car because the extreme acceleration, always look ahead, always plan ahead uh, with this car. Um, you know, be very careful with power on, uh, the, uh, it does rotate, uh, it's just extremely well. And you can kind of use the weight of the car momentum to get the car to rotate. It is unbelievable taking this thing through Chicago boxes and it going through a Chicago box like a Miata, even though it's a 4,000 pound, you know, grocery getter sedan. Okay, so lastly, where do you put your GoPro if you have one? I usually put it up here uh, with a little suction mount up to the glass roof. That way you can see kind of outside the scar, you can, you can see your steering input to see uh, if your hands are in the correct position. That's very important. You can also see the screen. Uh, and um, if you do uh, our, our, our autocrossing in a very bright day, make sure to watch my video about setting an ISO bracket with your GoPro. And that way uh, the picture is less blown out on really bright days. So let's get out into the autocross and see how it goes. You're good.
Okay, so we're back from the autocross. As you can see, uh, the car did phenomenally uh, with um, with that cone. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I got eighth place out of 86. Uh, but if I had not hit that cone, it would have been third raw out of 86 in a 4,000 pound sedan. With the next two fastest cars being a completely gutted C5 Corvette race car. So it goes to show you how dominant this car is. Uh, and with a better driver than me, easily would have been able to get first place. And with this autocross, this was actually a fairly long autocross, and that fastest run was actually my fifth run. And the car had dipped down, since this run was, these runs were so long, had dipped down below 75% state of charge. And the kind of one of the annoying things with EVs is the power starts to decline the lower state of charge you get. And it's not really that noticeable on the street, but when in track conditions, it starts to become very noticeable. And uh, that run was actually done, I think, at about like 65% state of charge. So I can just imagine being in a higher state of charge uh, and being able to go much faster. Because you could, in my earlier videos, that straightaway I was getting to 90, and as you saw in the last run, I think it was like 86. So you can actually see the difference there in power. Uh, and my entry points were actually better in the later runs than it was in the earlier runs. So theoretically, I should have been able to even have a higher top speed in the later runs. One of the other things I didn't go over earlier on before the autocross is why uh, the tires are loaded in the car. I get that question a lot. People think it's idiotic. Uh, so it's one of those things where it depends. If you're 30 minutes away from the autocross, you do not have to put the car the tires in the car. Just drive the car there. I was three hours away from the autocross. So running uh, the EVs are very sensitive to, to inefficiency. Because uh, the energy density of batteries uh, is very low in comparison to internal combustion engines. So uh, when you put on a 265, 200 treadwear tire onto the Tesla, you're going to drop something like 20 per 30 percent efficiency. And that 315 mile range is suddenly 250 miles. Meaning I would have, instead of having to wake up at like 5 o'clock to go to the charger, I would have had to wake up at like 4 o'clock. So... In that case is when you're going somewhere far with the EVs, uh, it's better off to just put the tires in the car, use the stock wheels and tires, which are very efficient and get good um, gas mileage or whatever you want, a kilowatt efficiency. Uh, I forgot what the term is. And uh, that's the reasoning behind that. Uh, so like I said, so like for instance, if I'm going to Daytona, uh, I live very close to Daytona. I'm not going to put the, the uh, tires in the car. I'm just going to put it on. Wake up a little earlier, you know, go to the charger at Daytona. Um, but I'm not going to lose much efficiency because it's only a few, uh, it's less than an hour from my house. So one of the other things you can see with the car is how well balanced it is. I kept talking about it. Uh, and you can see from these two uh, sliding kind of uh, when I hit some dust slash uh, hit the throttle in the wrong moments, just how well balanced the car is and how easily it is to recover from a slide especially an extreme slide, uh, as you can see in the second one. Uh, I would definitely love to take this car drifting. I just have to find a safe way to do it. Uh, so we shall see. So lastly, just some thoughts on, you know, using this car as an autocross car. Uh, in my case, I have woken up early to get, uh, you know, four or five o'clock to go uh, take the car to a charger, charge up before the autocross, change the tires in autocross, so yes, it ends up being a long day. One of the advantages, though, is you have autopilot, so the drives are a lot less monotonous. Those little adjustments you use driving on the highway for a few hours uh, in a normal car, you don't have to do those in a Tesla, so it's a lot less mentally exhausting. So it being a longer day in EV isn't that much of a deal. One of the other things you can do is stay at a hotel that has a destination charger, and that way you're ready to go You know, right at the autocross location. It's normally what I do is I stay someplace uh, or stay at a friend's who I just hook up to the, the slow charger, and that's usually enough. It'll take 10, 11 hours, but it's charged up by the time I'm ready to go. So, And then when you're heading home, uh, it's not really a big deal as long as there's a supercharger by you. You know, I usually just try and grab dinner or something on the way home and, and try and plan ahead. That's the thing is I've never really noticed an impact on trips taking longer with EVs. Uh, me being a planner professionally, not a big deal. I plan 
I plan around it so the trips don't really take any longer than my gas vehicles. So I hope you enjoyed this video. You learned something about autocrossing with EV vehicles, especially Teslas. Thanks for watching.